All right. Well, what are we doing today? Well, this is my daily driver. It's a 97 F-150. If you follow my channel, you may have seen a few videos where I uh, changed the rear end uh, shim, uh, clutch packs and uh, maybe a few others here and there. Still in exceptional shape, still drives great, still gets about 18 miles to the gallon, which ain't bad for a 5.4 with a four-wheel drive on it, and uh, should turn 250,000 miles in the next couple of days. But uh, it has always had, since I've owned it for seven years now, almost eight, um, a weird thing. When you're starting off from a stop, I mean, there's always going to be a little backlash like this, but even after the backlash gets taken up, you can kind of feel something go chunk, like it like it moves maybe an eighth of a turn, you know, just like something would move. And I've looked and, you know, checked all of the bushings and all of the springs, and actually it's got brand new springs on it a couple of years ago because the old ones had cracked, and, uh, you know, I just put new shocks on it, which didn't do anything, and I mean, I've checked front suspension, rear suspension, all of the mounts, everything is tight. Like I said, it's got a little bit of play in here, but when it's preloaded, but with by the transmission, you'll never see that. But like now at this point, if it were to go, you know, you would see, you would feel it go an eighth of a turn, and then it would start feel like it would start moving. And I've never been able to figure it out what the hell is loose. But I saw some things the other day that made me think that it could be up here. There is a, it's a single piece drive shaft, and uh, that thing looks pretty dry, but scuttlebutt is that the splines on the slip yoke get dry, and they don't move well as well as they should. So I'm probably going to screw this up, because that's a 20 plus year old tail shaft seal there, and uh, it'll probably never seal again. But that's all right. I can put a new one in it. But I'm going to pull the uh, the drive shaft off and uh, see what I can find. And if they are dry, I'm going to lubricate them with some grease, and we'll see if that helps. And uh, now I've honestly never actually even checked the U joints in this thing, so I guess that'll be uh, something we're going to do as well. Doesn't look like it'll be too difficult. I got it in neutral. I got the emergency brake on. Looks like they're three eighths, twelve point, maybe. Uh, my luck, they're probably metric, but uh, we're going to see what we can do. All right. Let's see. <laughs> Ain't three-eighths, but since I have a paint pen... And since I have the ability to put it back where I left, where I took it off from, just since it's balanced and in time, for no reason, I'm going to mark it. And go get a different socket. Son of a gun. Well, it's not 10. And it's not 7 sixteenths. So, maybe it's a 12. Back in a minute. And there she is, 12 millimeter metric 12 point. Oh boy, this ought to be something. Ooh, there she goes. Not too bad. All things considered. I don't think that's too bad considering this there's a very substantial possibility that this has never been a part since 1997 when it was installed. When it was originally assembled. I'm wondering if 
I can use my speed wrenches on that. I bet I can. Not sure why I bought these, because well, I know why I bought them, because I always seem like I haven't time to use them, and I never have the damn things. And this turns out to be one of those times. Easier than using the little breaker bar. Leave that one in until the last, so I don't drop it on my face. wrenches. A little Loctite on there. No wonder they come off stiff. Well, I'll put some back. Yeah, well, if this comes off and the U-joints are toast, she's going to be sitting for the night. I'll take my SRT 10 in in the morning and pick up some U-joints on the way home and then you can watch me change those out. But I'm hoping that's not the case because I don't feel like doing that. Well. Okay, well, if that's any indication, it is uh, a bit stiff. Go get a pry bar. And yes, this is an actual pry bar, not a screwdriver. Although I am certainly not averse to using a screwdriver. I wonder if there's a... Yeah, there is. You can see it. Just a little bit of a hub centric there. That's why it was hard to come off. But uh, nice and clean. Nothing too terrible. Let's check something out here. silk. It's a nice thing about having effectively no torque. And the other one feels pretty good. Right. Now we'll see what we see when she comes out. Well, it doesn't feel bad, that's for damn sure. Whoops. Okay, it stopped dripping. Okay, well that uh, felt pretty darn smooth coming off. And then we'll scarf it up. Let's see what we got. Well, I have to say, uh, it did come off very smoothly, and it's got some lube in it, but that's not a very smooth surface probably hard to see but you can actually see those little marks on there that's uh, I guess from machining so it's a very clean drive shaft nothing seriously wrong with it but it's uh, I mean it's fairly dry I'm give it a little bit of squirt with some some lube after I inspect the uh, the upper portion, but uh, I can't see this being the fix, to be honest.
it's not terribly well lubricated. I mean, it's not dry by any stretch of imagination. It ain't rusted. Um, but it's not dry. So we will do a little bit of lubrication. And wonderfully, this is another perfectly functioning U-joint. So I'm going to get a little of my heavy-duty metal protector by, by AMS oil and load that bad boy up and get her back together. Okay. This stuff is fantastic. Don't leave home without them. And it smells great too. A little bit of lube for the seal so it doesn't go back completely dry. All right, well, let's go for a test drive. Since I'm too lazy to figure out how to hook up the uh, oh, yep. 249.865, I'm too lazy to figure out how to set up the uh, what am I gonna set up? The damn mounts for my GoPro. We're just gonna wing it. Didn't do it then. Here, my posse working, <laughs> but uh, we will see. This old truck runs pretty good. Got a broken dash. I gotta get, go to the junkyard and get a piece to fix that. That's one thing I noticed in the junkyards. Nobody ever wants that top piece. And a lot of times, these old Fords, it'll actually be sitting there by itself. Hmm. I don't know. We'll see. Sure. Hard to believe that that would be the only thing doing it. Hasn't done it yet. You know, it's hard to even explain uh, while you're driving what it feels like. It's just that it, it felt like something was shifting. You know, when you first got on the power, love my road here, check these potholes. Oh, yeah, gotta love my town. But, uh, felt like something was just kind of shifting like I said right before it would start moving and as if there was something disconnected and it would move an inch and and then it would start you know, rolling um, but I don't know we'll have to see I hadn't really paid much attention to it to be honest over the last few months because I mean I've been so used to it probably put 20,000 miles on this thing in the last year and close to uh, 70,000 no, that's tire slip but that didn't feel like it used to hmm. strange well yeah, it's hard to tell I'll do one more here just a normal come to a normal stop like you would 
No, see, that's where it would do it. Kind of where you get that intermediate where the torque converter's loaded, but the car hasn't quite started moving yet, and you could, you could feel it. I'm thinking that might have worked. Boy, if I'd only known that seven years ago. I'll tell you, though, uh, as far as dry splines, well, quote-unquote, I believe these drive shafts are supposed to be, like, plated with nickel or something to act as a lubricant, and they, you know, it just, hell, it probably wore off. Like I said, I got a quarter million miles on this baby. So, we're going to do it one more time, just because. No, she feels pretty good. I'm going to call that a success. And uh, if I notice it, if it starts acting up again, I'll uh, see if I can get the video camera out and actually capture what the car is doing on video. Maybe I'll stick it underneath it if I ever figure out how to use all these stupid articulating pieces of the GoPro mounts that I've got that I haven't figured out yet. Well, that felt good too. So... Powerhouse. I think 250 horsepower or whatever this thing was 20 years ago. But anyway... Uh, if you like what you see, please subscribe to my channel. I do appreciate the support. Got some great burnout videos when I'm working on the Firebird. A bunch of stuff about how I fix my camper and things like that that I upgrade. And pretty much just about anything that I, I do, I try to take a video to see if it'll help anybody. Because I like fixing stuff and I like helping people fix stuff. So uh, anyway, that's about it for today. Hope you all have a good night. Take care.